Good evening, friends. We start tonight with the campaign trail and the road forward. The road to the nomination for Sanders is narrow, no question about it, and it would be historical if he completes the journey. The mission all along has been to change the politics in America and ignite a political revolution. After millions of supporters and records amount of dollars raised, stepping aside just doesn't make any sense to the Sanders campaign. Speaking of change, the Democrats in the state of Maine will vote this weekend at the state Democratic convention to eliminate the superdelegate system. Now that's change. Sanders won the state of Maine with 65% of the caucus vote. He picked up 16 delegates to Hillary Clinton's nine. The very system Sanders wants to change is the system he needs to win the nomination. Turning the superdelegates after a strong showing in California is the mission. For more on this, let's turn to Jeff Weaver, campaign manager for Bernie Sanders. Jeff, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Ed. Happy to be here. You bet. I know you've been very critical of the superdelegate system and you want that changed. And now I see the state of Maine is going to vote at their state convention this weekend to get rid of the superdelegate system. Does that help you make your case in the long haul that you've got a state doing this? Well, clearly there's been a lot of concern about superdelegates that have been, uh, you know, articulated by people at the grassroots level. Uh, you know, when you have a process where you have uh, over 700 delegates at the beginning who, you know, are, are unbound and can sort of sway the election, obviously that's raised some concerns. And I think as we go to the convention, the Democratic National Convention this year, certainly the issue of superdelegates is one that we're going to have to look at. Although, you know, for this process this year, there will be superdelegates. And uh, so we're trying to work with superdelegates to get as much uh, support from them as possible. You can't get the nomination without them. The very system you don't like, you got to rely on to get the nomination. It is what it is. But I keep hearing that these superdelegates are really entrenched in the Clinton camp. Do you really think you can get them to move if you have a run and win, uh, say, Oregon and California? Well, Ed, let me just say this, that, you know, the superdelegates are made up of party, senior party officials, as well as elected officials, members of Congress and governors. Uh, and, but these people, at the end of the day, they want to win. They want the Democrats to win, uh, not just the White House, but they want to win up and down the ballot. And the polling here uh, shows consistently, I mean, almost without exception, that against Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders is a much stronger general election candidate than his, uh, Secretary Clinton. Why don't I see more of that on all the networks? Do you feel like you're being cheated a little bit? I mean, all I see is Clinton, Trump, and, and her numbers running against Trump. I don't see too much of that. I mean, certainly you've had to notice that. And how do you feel about it? Well, I certainly have noticed it, and I, you know, I think that they're ignoring a big part of the uh, political story here. I mean, what takes over, obviously, is uh, in many cases the business imperative takes over, and so you know, Trump's outrageous statements uh, dominate the news, as opposed to having the kind of uh, in-depth political coverage that I know you and I uh, support on television. Uh, so this narrative, this story, uh, these facts that Bernie Sanders is a stronger candidate than Hillary Clinton, I mean, it is borne out by all of the polling evidence. Uh, not only on a national level, but in many battleground states. Uh, and the, the reason for that is quite simple. Uh, Bernie Sanders brings in and excites uh, millions of young people into the process, uh, similar to the way that uh, President Obama did in 2008. Yeah. In addition to that, he's overwhelmingly strong, Ed. We've seen this in, in primary after primary, where independents can vote in the Democratic primary. You see Bernie Sanders gets 65, 70 percent of independents. He's very strong with independents, and Democrats can't win in the fall without independents. Well, I, I just keep seeing these numbers that Clinton has against Trump, but uh, I don't see it being pushed out there that, yeah, but Sanders does better against Trump than Clinton does. And, I, and then there's this conversation about tone. It's almost as if there's this real concern that the Sanders campaign is going to go too tough on Hillary. What about that? Do you feel like you're being coached on how to run this thing out? Well, we're, the senator is going to run the campaign he wants to run. Uh, that, you know, that's the beauty of Bernie Sanders. He will be Bernie Sanders. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that the tone in uh, the Democratic side of this campaign has been uh, pretty much focused on issues. You know, there's been some, some tough contrast between the two candidates because there are some big differences. So that doesn't change. Like, that, that, that does, no, I mean, not I, at all. I guess what I'm asking is, is the Sanders campaign mentality... You know, DWIT, D-W-I-T, that's what the old football coach Chuck Knoll wrote up on the blackboard when he was coaching the Steelers when they were having some controversy. Do whatever it takes. I mean, is the right. Sanders camp still in that mentality? 
Well, look, Bernie Sanders has said that he is in it to win it. Uh, he's competing hard all the way till the end, till the last vote is cast, till the last delegate is assigned. Uh, and then he's going to go into the convention, I think, with a tremendous amount of momentum because the states that are ahead of us, Ed, uh, you know, generally are very favorable states for the senator. He's in West Virginia today, uh, and that's going to be a very good state for him on Tuesday. But your, your move forward is nothing's changed, do whatever it takes, correct? Well, well, you know, within the, within the boundaries that the senator has set, you know, the, okay. the senator has decided. Yeah, well, he's not negative. I mean, uh, but uh, right. whatever it takes within the realm of the way you philosophically want to run this campaign. All right, I want to talk quickly about Absolutely. there's a bunch of Republicans who are lining up not supporting Donald Trump. Speaker uh, Paul Ryan has come out and said he's not ready to go. Mitt Romney, not going to support him and go to the convention. Uh, Bob Dole. Now, the reason why I mention those three is there's three different generations representing Republicans that aren't on the Trump bandwagon right now, and they're searching for an alternative candidate. The conventional wisdom is that would walk the Democratic nominee into the White House. But what if the nominee is not Bernie Sanders? Would you consider an independent or outside run for the, for the White House uh, if the Republicans were to break it up so there would be four people possibly eligible for the White House? What do you make of that? Well, the senator has said quite clearly from the very beginning of this that he will support the Democratic nominee uh, in the fall. So uh, we anticipate that that will be Bernie Sanders, but if it's uh, Secretary Clinton, he has said he will support the Democratic nominee. You know, it's, we do not want to see a Donald Trump getting into the White House. It would really be a disaster uh, for this country. Jeff Weaver, great to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Ed.